Ask and you shall receive. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today's video is an update on yesterday's one where I showed how I made a pirate chest lid for my mate Russ. While I was doing it I asked the question was there a better way for me to extend the length of my arc and yes there is. I got two great answers and I'm going to go through both of them. So the first one I want to thank is uh, Chaos Optional who told me about the extend tool. Now I have to admit something I'd seen before and filed away thinking I must remember that, that's going to be really useful, and then promptly forgot about it. I went back to the old ways of doing things and uh, basically made my life a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. So first of all, let's pop across into uh, Aspire and uh, have a quick look at that extend tool. So you can see here I've got set up where I was yesterday with my uh, arc uh, in the original square and also I have here the extended sized square that I want to uh, move. So I want the end of this arc to come through, intersect with this line here, and stop. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to get rid of this uh, square around here, because I don't need it. And I'm going to come over here to the Extend tool. Now this is childishly simple. What I have to do is go to the end of my arc, click on it, and move across to uh, anywhere on this line here click on it, there it is, it's extended. Again here, click on there, click on there, done. I'll just close this, grab that there, and there you go. I've got my arc, all I have to do is move this line here, the rail that I want to sweep this here across, move it up uh, the offset of my one eighth of an inch, which was half the diameter of my cutter, apply the molding toolpath, and I'm done. So that was the first option. I'll just go back to where I was and I'll just get rid of this square. And I'm actually going to get rid of this square here. So this is the original arc I had that I applied and I'm about to do that now. So I'm just going to go into Molding Toolpath. I'm going to select the rail, hold down the Shift key, select my arc and hit Calculate. Now I'm just going to move myself on the screen there. And let's do a preview of this toolpath. And it's no surprise to find out that again, I've got those strange curves on the ends. Now this is where I want to thank John Borg. He told me about the boundary uh, option within molding toolpaths. Now I'd misunderstood what that was. I had thought that a boundary um, this offset would raise the cutter, uh, the specified height above my line and machine that and basically just make the whole thing higher. Never looked any further into it. Turns out I'm entirely wrong. So uh, let's just add in there a figure of 0 0.125 and uh, hit calculate. Now you can't really see what's going on here, but I'm just going to preview this to start with. And we'll just have a look at the result. And you can see here, those little curved edges have now gone. So that's basically solved the problem. It didn't alter the top here, and I'll just reset the preview and just preview the uh, toolpath again. And you can see it still goes right to the top, and those curves are gone off the end. So what it's actually doing is the boundary offset only affects the ends of it. So to show demonstrate what it's actually doing a little bit better, I'm going to add uh, one inch onto the end there. And look at the tool path here. We've got our curve, but when it gets to the bottom, it now flicks out by one inch. So it comes along in our curve, and then it goes flat again. And that's what gets rid of those little curves on the end. A brilliant little tool which will make this job even easier. You no longer need uh, to go to the trouble I did uh, to extend the length of that curve. Just add a boundary offset. 
So again, thank you very much, John. Really appreciate that tip, as I'm sure many people watching here will as well. And that's the great thing. When you go out and you help other people, you also get help in return. You can learn lots of different things. I've become stuck in my ways of doing things, and it's good to learn new things. Now, another question I got asked was, would it be possible to engrave uh, my lid or to uh, add a, a model on top of it like your skull and crossbones and things and the answer to that is no molding toolpaths are not actually 3d models uh, they're basically just done as a toolpath it's like running it through a spindle molder uh, you don't get an option to uh, add more to it if you want to do that you basically just have to model the uh, chest lid but you could actually flip the thing over and hollow out the inside by using another molding toolpath if you were so inclined. So uh, I'm uh, just let you know I am still working on the lithophane keyring video. I uh, hope to get it out this weekend. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, it is a long weekend coming up as well. Easter is just about here. So um, I'd like to wish all you guys a happy Easter. And once more I'd like to thank both John and Chaos Optional for helping out with this. In the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Cheers.